It is time to manual swap the S13. This dog shit automatic transmission has been a pain in my ass for too long and it is time to go. So I'll try and be as detailed as I can in this video. Um, you're probably best off just using a guide that's on the internet. I'll post the ones I used in the description. But um, I don't know, it's always good. This is a common mod people like to do. It's always good to have more resources out there. So I figured I'd at least show what I'm doing. Uh, first thing I did, take the hood off. Um, that will save your life if you're trying to do this with the hood on. You're fucked. Um, next thing I did, Took the center console out, took the finish panel around the stereo out, and then just unbolted everything to do with the automatic shifter here. Comes right out. Well, it doesn't come right out. It's still connected to a transmission. But, uh, yeah, that's a good place to start. Once you get that cotter pin off, whole shifter comes straight out of the car. And now, got a nice big hole where you can put your five-speed shifter. So, next thing you want to do, uh, get the car up in the air, put jack stands under it, don't be an asshole. Uh, pop your drain plug off, mine was three quarter inch, and drain all your ATF. That's pretty similar to me. Now you can see oh, the, uh, the end yeah, at the end the yeah. slip yoke is different, which is the important part, and the length is different. Yoke's on you. <laughs> so, uh, next thing you're going to do is pull out the drive shaft. Got four bolts that connect it to the differential, uh, 14 millimeters. Um, one bolt that holds the carrier bearing in, 17 millimeters. There was two bolts there. There was two bolts there, that's true. Uh, and then you just slide it out of the end of the transmission, easy peasy. If I was smart, I would have done this while I was under the car, uh, but I forgot to film that, so this is the best I can do. When the squad shows up. Wrapped, like halfway down, like it's wrapped all the way to here, so you gotta warm up the whole exhaust. So, the next thing we did was pulled all four 17 mil bolts out of the transmission support right there. Uh, that drops the back end a little bit. Got this stupid thing on the way. Uh, we got this stupid exhaust hanger out of the way that mounts to the transmission mount. And we pulled the cooling lines off the exhaust. Um, if you don't want to pull those off, you can just cut them because they're, they're no use after you take the transmission out. Now we're doing the bitchy part, uh, which is we got to remove all the 14 mil bell housing bolts. So we got all the bell housing bolts out. Um, there's only a couple that are really hard. They're up behind the uh, head here. Um, Brett, once again, showing a shitload of wedge. Um, yeah, so the next step is we are going to drop the transmission. Um, best way to do that, in my experience, throw a jack underneath. If you have two jacks, throw two jacks underneath. Works good too. I like to jack up the back of the trans, throw a toe strap around the front of the trans. Um, that's not in the interest of protecting the transmission. That's mostly just in the interest of protecting anybody who's underneath trying to get the transmission out because you do kind of have to you know, reef and wobble on it a bit for it to come off the uh, input shaft. So, yeah, that's the next step. How young is this puppy? Uh, three, four months. Oh, man, what the fuck? Yeah, he's huge for his age. Now I want to see the dog. Oh, you'll see. Montage, keep going. I'm going. Just relax. Where's my sensor? <laughs> is it coming at all? Uh, hold on, we're waiting for a light year. No. Okay. What? Start pulling it back. Oh shit. It's coming. We need to we need to come up with a contingency for when it falls. I'm up there, Brett. Uh alright. Yeah, just keep going up a bit more. Get okay, stop. I think we might need a bit more pry bar at the front. No, that's totally off. I, I, yeah, I, I got nothing to pry on. Oh, it's that far off? Yeah, you got like six inches of gap here. Oh, that's 
think this hose is gonna stop you right here. This one. Okay. So we got the uh, all the bell housing bolts off, and we pulled the trans quite a bit off the engine before we realized that we still have to unbolt the torque converter from the flywheel. Um, so the way you do that is you pull the dust covers off the front. Um, I'll show a shot from below, and then you just unbolt them. It's not too hard. How you stop talking? Okay, so we have the transmission down. Somebody forgot to film it. Yeah, I was too busy ranting to at Facebook. And fluids everywhere. Don't know what happened. We dropped everything all at once. You cut that one and uh, it's out. That's all that matters. Oh, it like just keeps filming straight no matter what. Thumbnail picture. That's your R7. So here's our train swap in the two <laughs> There we go. We need a picture for the thumbnail. Don't mind me. Just jacking off. <laughs> Alright, so um transmission is out, Jeff threw the torque converter in the garbage in an angry rage. I forgot to film again. So sorry everyone. We need to put the clutch in. Um we need to take the automatic flywheel out, put the manual flywheel in, put the clutch in, put the manual transmission on, put the clutch in, clutch pedal in. Clutch master cylinder in, bit. hook that up, and then wire it. Sounds good. Yeah. Let's smoke it. Can I offer criticism? Yep. Yeah. That's kind of what I wanted to avoid, but uh, I'll take it. it. Did it work or did it That's not work? It. I do. I do regret doing that. <laughs> It worked! So, once you get the transmission out, uh, next thing you're going to do is take the flywheel bolts off. Um, they are uh, 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter. And do yourself a favor, get uh, an air powered impact because if you try and do this with a wrench, it's just you're just going to have a long day. So I screwed up and didn't film a step, but the next thing we did was we pulled out the automatic transmission um, pilot bearing and put in the manual transmission pilot bearing. Uh, the automatic transmission bearing we removed by beating the absolute shit out of it with an air hammer and then it just shattered and we were able to chisel out the pieces. With the chisel attachment it took five minutes. The manual transmission adapter bearing. Um, I was too hard on the first one and I shattered it while pounding it in. Luckily, uh, the parts store had another one by some miracle. Second one, I was a lot more delicate and I did not shatter it and so that is done. The next thing we did was put on the flywheel. Now they tell you to uh, use manual transmission flywheel bolts because the automatic transmission ones are too short. Now I did get manual transmission bolts and use them, but uh, the automatic transmission bolts looked like they might have worked. So I think depending on what flywheel you have, you might be able to get away with it. But uh, for safety's sake, you're best off just hunting down some manual transmission bolts. I just found some used from a, from a local parts guy. Uh, next thing we're going to do after getting the flywheel on is give it a good clean with some brake cleaner so that uh, your clutch works good and then we are going to throw the clutch on there. So I mean once you have the transmission and everything out, doing a clutch job is not actually that hard. Uh, first thing you do is take the alignment tool, put it through the clutch, and then you just take it and stick it into the pilot bearing that you hopefully just put in. Next thing to do is put the pressure plate on. Pretty much what you do there is you just keep the uh, alignment tool in the clutch, put the pressure plate over top, Bolt it down, uh, I'll put the torque specs up uh, over top of this, and then once you got it all torqued down, just pull out the clutch alignment tool and your clutch is pretty much good to go. So the last thing you'll have in your clutch kit will be your new throat bearing. Uh, your old throat bearing will be pressed onto this little piece of metal that uh, attaches to the clutch fork, it's what causes it to actuate. And uh, the way I get that off is I take a 
one inch deep impact socket, put it in the middle like so. Then take a little bolt, put it in the one inch deep impact socket, and uh, then I put a wheel puller on it and just yank it off. This is what the whole shebang looks like. Wheel puller, bolt socket, and then around the throw up bearing. If you don't have a wheel puller, uh, I'm sure you could get this off by just throwing it in a vise and kicking the shit out of it with a hammer. Um, realistically, you should buy a wheel puller. Uh, comes in handy for pulling bearings, comes in handy for pulling pulleys. Uh, but if you don't have that, I'm sure a hammer will do you no wrong. So if you're like me and you don't have access to a press, you don't really feel like going and finding access to a press, here's how you get your throw up bearing. Step one, just take a hockey puck. Step two, hit it with a fucking hammer. Boom. So now that you got the throw up bearing on its little holder, throw that back in the transmission, clip it back onto the clutch fork. Uh, the next step is going to be, bro, what's the next step? I forgot already. Um, drill the holes. <laughs> I don't know why I said it when I was sitting over there. Where's my flashlight? There it is. Were you recording that? Or were you? Talking to yourself. I was recording it. Okay. The next step is going to be you can see that little metal thing right here. That's the template for what you need to cut out to get your clutch pedal in. So uh, that circle in the middle needs to be cut out, and these two little cylinders need to be drilled out. Dick. All right, can you grab me the one I just had? Yes. Or one similar in size? Fuck! <laughs> I'm glad I edit these videos so I don't have to put any of them. Or you could, because it's fun. <laughs> My back hurts so bad right now. I bet. That looks extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> so uncomfortable. Oh, fucking cars! Should have fucking taken up kayaking or something. <laughs> Cheap and easy. You only need to buy a kayak once and then it relaxes you. And it never breaks. Nope. So, okay. Ah, give me something big. Bigger? Big. Um. So, um. Fuck, I, I, I start with so too often. We made the hole in the firewall. Uh, we just drilled a bunch of holes and then beat the shit out of it with a hammer and a screwdriver until it came out. Uh, one side of the hole goes the clutch master cylinder. On the other side of the hole goes the clutch pedal. They screw into each other. So we got the clutch pedal in. Essentially there's two studs on the back of the clutch pedal that go through the firewall. Uh, and you bolt to the uh, master cylinder. There's also one bolt up top there that connects the clutch pedal to the body of the car, I guess. And there's one little dowel that goes through the clutch pedal arm and connects it to the master cylinder. So now it's time to put the transmission into the car, which in my opinion is the absolute shittiest part of this job. Uh, I've done it before on a 240 by myself, so I know I can do it. Um, all of my helpers, have abandoned me because it's like five o'clock on a Sunday night and we've been working on this all weekend. Uh, effectively, what you need to do is you need to get that input shaft into the pilot bearing that we just installed. Um, it's a giant pain in the ass. What I like to do is I throw a toe strap under the bell housing. You can see that's the orange one there. I already got it set up. And then Put a jack under the tail shaft, or tail area, uh, whatever you want to call it. And then you just curse and swear and beat the shit out of it for like two hours until it goes in the car. 
So I got the transmission in. It was uh, really fucking difficult. Giant pain in the ass. Got it in. Got the bell housing all bolted up. Now we're just trying to bleed the clutch. Um, for some reason, we can't get this master cylinder to push out any fluid, so I think I might have a dud. So, uh, I don't know. We're going to fuck around with this a bit, but we might have to roll the car out and fix it sometime this week. So it turns out the problem was just that one of our clutch lines was loose, and um, that's why it wasn't bleeding properly. So we tightened that up, um, bled it no problem. This new, uh, this new clutch system I put in doesn't have a dampener or anything, so it's a pretty straightforward bleed. And uh, now we are just throwing on the drive shaft and rear transmission mount. And so the manual swap was a success. I, uh, I got it running, driving. Uh, as you can see, my interior is still a little janky right now just because I don't have the interior parts. Uh, I got the fucking skateboard wheel shift knob going because uh, I didn't even think to buy a shift knob before I did this. I didn't think, didn't even think of it. A um, couple little things that need to be ironed out uh, that don't prevent me from driving the car but just make it less pleasant to drive. Uh, my speedometer doesn't work right now. I'm not moving, so obviously it shouldn't be doing anything anyways. But uh, for some reason, I don't know why, I hooked up the speed sensor, the manual speed sensor, the same way the auto speed sensor was hooked up, but uh, she just doesn't go, so I'm not sure why that is. Uh, and also the drive shaft does not seem to get along that well with the welded differential. Uh, the wheels will start to hop, and then the wheel hop will cause drive shaft vibration which irons out, it irons out above like five kilometers per hour. It only happens at really low speed, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. I never had that problem with the automatic drive shaft. So uh, I think it's either the rear transmission mount is just disintegrated. So it's letting the back of the transmission kick around a little bit, which is making the, it seem like the drive shaft is vibrating or uh, either that or the drive shaft just needs like U joints or a carrier bearing or something. Uh, all of that isn't too big of a deal to fix, but it is kind of annoying. So that's about it. As you can see, runs and drives half decent. Um, I can't really push it or anything right now because my clutch is on the break in period. And uh, also, I'm sure if you've ever done a job like this, you're familiar with the intense feeling of discomfort, uh, not knowing if it's going to blow up or anything any minute. So, uh, taking it easy on it for probably the next 500 kilometers here. Um, I mean, already it's a billion times better than the automatic. I cannot stress how just gutless and disgusting the automatic that comes in this car is. I already took mine and threw it in the dump so it can never hurt anybody anymore. But it just doesn't let you rev. It just wants you to be at like 500 RPM all the time. Um, it's, it's garbage. But the manual is way... Even a manual that's like with a C-plus install, you know, by a bunch of amateurs in a driveway in a weekend is a thousand times better than the automatic. Um, if you're thinking of doing this, I would say it's worth it if you can get like a screaming deal on, a, on an automatic car. Um... Because it was expensive. It cost me about 500 bucks in the long run. Um, and it's a huge amount of work. But if you don't really value your labor that much, and you can find an automatic going for just ridiculously cheap, and it's worth it to do the swap, I'd say go for it. I mean, if I can do it, you can probably do it. But um, if you want a car that is clean and works well, I would say just save up and buy buy a factory manual because I mean realistically unless you're like a master mechanic any car you buy and swap completely from an automatic to a manual is probably going to come out quite a bit worse than it was when you started my car obviously a huge shitbox so even if it was worse you wouldn't even be able to tell but uh, I can assure you it's much better